Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Gaming on Cafe. My name is Isaac, and we are back for episode four of Hypovolemia. Last episode, we started working on our basic machine setup over here. We made ourselves some blood dynamo so we can transfer our life essence into redstone flux and then use that power to get the induction crucible furnace and the metal caster here up and running and then use those machines to get ourselves some armor and some tools. And what I want to work on in today's episode is I want to work on possibly finishing this first quest line here because although we have quite a few quests left, I think if we push it, we could probably get all of these done today. And I also want to try and upgrade our blood altar from tier 1 to tier 2. Now, to do that, we need to get ourselves a bunch of blood runes. Now, if we go ahead and type in blood rune over here, these things are not particularly hard to make, but they're fairly time-consuming because to make them, we need, first of all, a bunch of stone, but most importantly, we need two blank slates per blood rune, and in order to upgrade our blood altar to a tier 2 altar, we need eight of these blood runes which means we need 16 blank slates, each of which require a thousand life points in a blood altar. Now, usually, the way that we would do this and the way we've been doing it up until now is we would just stand here next to the blood altar, put a piece of stone in, wait a few seconds, take it out, put another piece of stone in, wait a few seconds, take it out, and we could do that. That would work, but it's a bit time-consuming and it's a bit tedious, and there is a faster way of doing it, and that faster way comes in the form of the altar diviner, which we need to make for a quest anyway. So, if we go ahead and type in altar to diviner over here thankfully it's not too hard to make all we need is one blood altar in a blood altar with 5,000 life points and as we know a blood altar is super duper easy to make so if we head on over to our crafting table do something like this grab ourselves the normal blood altar we have over 5,000 life points in the altar already so all we have to do is stick that thing in there let it do its thing and when we come back in a few minutes that will be an altar diviner nope and when we come back in a few minutes, this will be an Alter Diviner. Cool. Now, one thing I have been doing since the end of last episode, or I've, doing, I've been doing a little bit, is farming for resources. I've occasionally gone around and picked all of these up, and I've been doing a little bit with magical crops, because if we look down here in the quest book at some of the mechanism quests, the first one is to make a metallurgic infuser. Now, to make a metallurgic infuser, we need, most importantly, we need osmium, because iron, redstone, and furnaces we can get fairly easily. The hardest bit is the osmium, but even even that's not too hard because that we can use bone meal on these magical crops like normal bone meal getting osmium is really really easy already we have ourselves six osmium essence and all we have to do is shift right click with the bone meal get ourselves seven and do it one more time get ourselves eight and there we go. We have ourselves, actually, I think maybe one more for nine. Once we've got ourselves nine, we can now run back over to our crafting table, craft that up in here like so. This should get us two osmium ore, at which point we can then go ahead and smell that up in the furnace, and that gets us the osmium ingots. Pretty cool stuff. Now, you'll notice that we already have a 64 stone in here. That is because uh, I knew that we were going to craft ourselves the altar diviner, and I knew we were going to need quite a bit of stone to make the blood runes. So the way that the altar diviner works is if you go ahead and put it down next to a blood to like so and uh, let me go ahead and quickly fill this up a little bit or as much as we can how much does that have now 8800 that should be fine um, basically what it does is it allows you to bulk craft stuff in the blood altar for example uh, if I wanted to say, we've already got two blank slates, so we need 14. Unfortunately, 14 requires 14,000 life points, and the altar doesn't currently support that much life points being stored at it at any given time. And so what we're going to do is we're going to do 10. So if we go ahead and go and make 10 of these, we get 10 stone, and put it all into here, once we have 10,000 life points, it should go ahead and deposit all of that stone into the blood altar, and then once all of them, and then once all 10,000 life points have been drained, it should move them back over into the altar diviner as 10 finished blank slates saving us a bunch of time and meaning that we don't have to do each and every single one individually so i'm gonna wait a few seconds here for this thing to fill up we're almost there And boom, it moved them all over. Uh, the animation is a little iffy. It didn't actually take them out of there by the looks of things. But trust me, uh, that should have moved all 10 from there into here. And once all that blood is drained, once all 10,000 is done, it should move them all back. So I'm going to let that do its thing and see how that turns out. Whilst we're waiting for that, let's see about making this um, metallurgic infuser. So first things first, we're going to need 16 cobblestone to make two furnaces. 
good stuff. And now all we need to do is head on back over to our crafting table, do something like this. And I think we're pretty much good to go. Yeah, there we go. Metallurgy Confuser, done. Cool stuff. All right, that is about halfway there. Let's head on into the quest book and claim our reward for that, which is some more Universal Cable. And the next quest, as you would imagine, require the use of the Metallurgy Confuser. So I'm going to stick this guy here. That thing instantly filled it with Redstone Flux. So that just shows how much we have uh, kind of in storage here in these Blood Dynamos. And the next quest in the quest line, or the next two quests, uh, are to make some steel and to make some basic circuits, both of which require the Metallurgy Confuser. I believe to make steel, we need iron and coal. And then I think to make the um, basic control circuit, we need redstone and osmium, if I'm not mistaken. So uh, to make this, all we need is, I think the quest wants us to get enriched iron. And for that, we need one piece of coal and one piece of iron in the Metallurgy Confuser. If we have charcoal, I would prefer to use that. Yeah, because it's a little easier to get than normal coal is. So we'll just throw some charcoal in there. We'll throw some iron in there. Shouldn't take all too long, and that should be done. I'm going to assume that this is a two-part quest over here that wants us to make an actual piece of steel before it lets us claim the reward. But uh, this thing is almost done. We'll take that. It is a two-part quest. It wants us to get re... Uh, oh. Um... Uh, I'm not quite sure what's up with that. It looks like they may have made a mistake when setting up the quest here. I'm assuming that quest wanted us to make steel, which I'm going to go ahead and do because we might as well. We've got some carbon left over in there and we can use that last 10 carbon to make a steel ingot. But it looks like they've just set it to any ingot will do, which I guess is fine. It, the reward is done. Uh, and then to make ourselves the basic control circuit, it's a very similar process. But instead of using coal and iron, we simply use redstone and osmium. So just like before, we'll take that out. We'll put the redstone and the osmium in. Whilst we're waiting for that, we can always go ahead and smelt this steel dust up into some steel. And look at this. This is done. We can now go ahead and take these out. And we now have 12 blank slates. Pretty cool. Uh, and again, we can do the exact same thing. We'll put some more blood into here. And all we need is four more. So one, two, three, four. We'll stick those in there. And again, it'll do the exact same thing. Uh, because we have over 4,000 life points in the Blood Altar, it knows that it can guarantee that all four of those will get turned into the blank slate. So it'll put them in there and then take them all out once they're done. This thing, again, is now done. So we can go back into our quest book. Is that done? It is. We can go ahead and claim that one. Uh, next up on the list is to make one enriched alloy, which I think uh, is also a fairly easy quest. All we need for enriched alloy is one redstone and one iron. So again, we'll throw the one redstone in there we'll throw one iron in there we could have used the compressed redstone compressed redstone gives you a lot more um like juice in this tank over here compared to normal redstone but i don't want to fill it up just yet just in case we have to like break it to make something else that requires coal instead of redstone um but that's that quest though we can go ahead and claim another aubrey bush which again uh, i'm not going to do just yet because i don't know quite which aubrey bush we're going to need so far we have yet to get any tin is he have any of these done they're not. We've yet to get any tin, but we're getting a ton of gold, iron, and copper, mostly because all three of these have the growth pulses underneath. But uh, tin, we do not have any tin yet. Thankfully, we don't actually need any tin uh, as of right now, so that's pretty cool. This one is done, so we will take you. And now we should be able to go ahead and do something like this. So we'll throw all of our stone in uh, like that. We'll put the slit either side. And then if we grab our blood orb, which I think is in this chest... Nope, it's over here in the alchemical chemistry set. If we take our blood orb and throw this in the middle, boom, we can make ourselves eight blood runes. And now what we can do is we can upgrade this blood altar to tier two. Now, normally what I'd do is I'd move it up one, but I think for the time being, what I'm going to do is just kind of move, uh, I'll put the runes in below it just to make it a little bit easier and so we don't have to move all of the stuff above it. But so basically, the way that you make a tier 2 altar is by surrounding the base of a tier 1 altar with these blood runes. So if I do something like this and put in the runes like so, and now if you look at it with our division sigil, you can see at the top there in Whaler, it says a tier 2 capacity is still 10,000 because we've just used normal blood runes. But it is now a tier 2 altar, which means that we can actually start to do some tier 2 recipes in it, uh, such as the sacrificial dagger. This guy over here is a pretty cool, the dagger of sacrifice. Uh, this is the sacrificial dagger. The dagger of sacrifice uh, works in a similar way to the sacrificial dagger but instead of taking life points from you and putting them into the altar it takes them from mobs and puts them in the altar so basically if you hit a mob with the dagger of sacrifice whilst it's above the blood altar it will kill the mob and put a certain number of life points into the blood altar i know certain mobs like zombies skeletons creepers all the general stuff are worth a lot less uh, in terms of life points compared to things like villagers i know for a fact that i think villagers are the most life points you get for killing a creature you get 1000 life points per villager that you kill unfortunately uh, i haven't seen any villagers in my passing so i don't know uh, if we're gonna be able to do that anytime soon but 
before we get onto that, because I think I might end up setting up uh, some kind of mob dropper right here before the end of today's episode. Before we do that, I want to work on finishing uh, some more of these mechanism quests because we are getting there. Uh, next quest is easing life, which is to make a portable tank. We already have a few portable tanks. Is it a um, submit quest? It's not. It's a crafting quest. So we do actually have to go ahead and make it ourselves. Thankfully, it is super easy to make. All we need is two glass and six iron. Again, glass, I don't think that we have. And if we remember from, I think, the episode before last, the way that we make glass is actually using sandstone. So we need to get ourselves some more skulls. So what I'm going to do, guys, I'm going to go away. I'm going to get some more skulls, turn them into sand, craft that into sandstone, smelt that into glass, and I'll be back in a second. Okay, so a little while later, we now have ourselves four glass. So all we have to do now is come on into here. And boom, we got ourselves a portable tank. Nice. So we can go ahead and claim the reward for that quest, which is not done. We need to make ourselves a basic universal cable, which I think, if I'm not mistaken, requires a s two steel. It does. We need two steel and one redstone. So we are going to have to come back over to the um, the metallurgic confuser over here, which is why I didn't want to put in the compressed redstone earlier, because uh, for a time like this, where well, I have to instead put charcoal in. But now we can go ahead and throw our iron in. And all we have to do is wait for that to finish, put it through again. And boom, we have ourselves our second piece of steel, which, again, we can just throw it into the furnace. And once that's done, we'll have our second piece of steel, and we can make ourselves eight basic universal cable. Nice. Now, looking ahead a little bit uh, in the quest line here, we need to make the logistical sorter, so, or the logistics sorter. Uh, this guy over here does require another basic control circuit. Uh, and so what I'm going to do is this time I am going to use the compressed redstone. And if we have any excess, we can just make some extra control circuits. But you'll see that, that one gives you 100 redstone, as opposed to, I think, maybe the 10 or 20 that you get from just a normal piece of redstone so using compressed redstone is definitely worthwhile but we'll do that uh, we'll throw the osmium in there uh, get that cooking up this thing is done let's go over to our crafting table boom boom and boom and we made the cable cool that is that quest almost done wow there's another section to it geez we need to make basic logistical transporters okay transporters we need to make one of these and that requires two more steel but also another control circuit so it's a pretty good thing that i made these extra ones here but you'll see that we have 80 spare redstone right now so what i think i'm going to do instead of having that redstone go to waste is i'm going to go away i'm going to spend quite a bit of time over in the uh, over by these crops get myself a bunch of osmium and try and get like maybe eight more of these basic control circuits so we don't waste that redstone uh, because we could just break it get rid of the redstone put it back down uh, and then use some charcoal but instead i think i'm going to try and make eight more uh, i'll also probably do some more tree chopping get some more charcoal and i'll be back in a second and there we go. A little while later, we now have ourselves eight basic control circuits. No redstone was wasted. And those are going to come in super useful later on down the line when we decide to go ahead and make ourselves uh, some other mechanism machines, like maybe the crusher, the enrichment chamber, all that kind of stuff. Maybe get some audible and going with mechanism at some point uh, to get more out of the osmium that we're getting. But uh, now what we need to do is make some more steel. And once we've got it, we can go into our crafting table, go boom, boom, and boom. And we get ourselves the eight basic logistical transporters that we need to hopefully now complete this quest. And we did. Cool. Uh, I'll take some gold because we've got quite a bit of iron and a lot of iron coming in. Although we also have a lot of gold coming in, so I don't think uh, that it really mattered all too much. And finally, the last little quest down in this section here is the logistical sorter that we saw earlier. And to make this guy, all we need to do is craft up seven iron with another basic controller and a piston. I think we were just given a piston for completing that quest. So, boom. That one is done, uh, and that's it. That is the end of that little quest down line down there. Again, we do have another option now, so I think at this point, do we have, like, so many that we can just take one of each? Let's have a look uh, over here. Was it this one? No. Which one was it that gave me an Aubrey bush? Also, we completed this quest line. I'll go ahead and claim that. Okay, so that law page was just telling us about rituals and multi-block structures within uh, Blue Magic itself. That's fine. Uh, I thought we had a quest somewhere that we hadn't uh, accepted. Oh, it was this one over here, wasn't it? So we now have almost enough to just take, like, one of each. So, you know, I'll take a tin in this one. I will take a copper in this one. And I will take uh, an iron in this one. Sure. Can I clear? Oh, I'm, my inventory's full. Okay. Uh, geez, I need to install inventory tweaks into this mod pack because I am fed up of my inventory just being a complete and utter mess. So let's go ahead and claim that. We also got a second logistical sorter, which is quite cool. Uh, and I'll go ahead and put these down between episodes, get all those set up again. Um, so now, the next one on here, uh, up this way, I thought we'd done this uh did it not recognize it let me pick this thing back up real quick uh, and see if it's going to recognize it this time around hopefully it's not a crafting quest that uh, that failed no it's not okay it did it did recognize it nice all right we'll put you back down we will go ahead and claim that quest 
Uh, I'll take the, again, the golden apple, because why not? At which point, we're 88% through completing this thing, which is pretty cool. Now, up here, we need to make veins. And for, for this quest, uh, we need to make basic mechanical pipes, which are a little bit different to the um, logistical pipes we just made, because the ones we just made uh, are used to transport items, kind of like item duct, if you ever played with thermal expansion. Whereas these next pipes, the mechanical pipes, are used to transfer fluids. So, mechanical pipes are made using, again, some more steel and a bucket. So, uh, same old song and dance, all we have to do is come on over to our metal confuser throw in some of the charcoal that i think i just put into here i did uh, come back over to the metal edge confuser make myself two more steel and then once that's done all we have to do is craft it up with a bucket instead of the basic circuit boom boom and boom and we got ourselves the mechanical pipes pretty simple nice so we'll go ahead and submit we need 10 really you're gonna maybe make two sets of those ah oh, what the heck okay so apparently we need 10 of those instead of eight so i'm gonna have to do that one more time and one more batch of steel later, so we can get ourselves eight more mechanical pipes, which now should go ahead and complete that quest, which it has, so we can go ahead and claim some apples. And now we'll have the three more quests within this quest line. This one over here, the item translocator, is probably going to be one of the hardest, because it requires us to actually leave our base and fight an enderman in order to actually get some ender pearls, something that I really don't want to have to do. There are alternate ways uh, to make them, but they're pretty expensive. Uh, if we look over here uh, and we look at the way to make an ender pearl, we can do it with an emerald and 3,000 life points so we can make an emerald with i think a diamond and 10,000 life points in our tier 2 altar um which I think I'm actually going to go and do. It's a little bit of a waste of a diamond when we could go outside and fight, but I kind of want to save my iron sword to make the dagger of sacrifice, which needs an iron sword in the blood altar. And I don't think you can use one that has been broken. So I'm going to go ahead. Uh, this thing is full. So putting that in there should go ahead and turn it into an emerald, at which point we only need 3,000 more to make it into an ender pearl. Uh, so that should be fairly easy. Whilst we're waiting for that, uh, I did go ahead and make uh, a little bit more steel because I took a quick look ahead at the recipe for the next quest, which is this one. By the way, some people told me that you can press R whilst in here to look at the recipes. For some reason, it's not working for me. U works. For, uh, for those who don't know, uh, R and U in NEI tell you the recipe and the use for the item. For some reason, U works, so I can press U and then click the recipe, but R doesn't work. I'm not quite sure why. But to make the electric pump, which we need for this next quest, we need two enriched alloys, three osmium ingots, one bucket, and then one block of steel casing. And to make the block of steel casing, we need four steel and five iron gears. So this now we should have... Oh. Creatures. <laughs> what? I'm not... Did I press, like, L? I have no idea what I just did, but apparently somehow I triggered a little bit of a law page. Possibly? Okay. But we now have ourselves the four steel to make that. Now all we need is the five iron gears. So an iron gear, I think, is four iron. That means we are going to have just enough iron to make those four iron gears, but we are going to need quite a bit more cobblestone. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go away. This thing is almost done. I'm going to go away. I'm going to make five iron gears. I'll be back in a second. Okay, so a little bit of time later, we now have enough cobblestone to make ourselves the four uh, stone gears, at which point we can go ahead and combine those up with the iron to get ourselves four iron gears. Oh, we need eight per... Oh, 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 oh. Okay, in that case, I think we're going to need a little bit more iron smelted up because I don't think we have any more. No, we don't. Okay, how many can we make right off the bat? We can make two. Okay, well, we're going to have to wait for a little bit more of that. Whilst we're waiting for that iron to smelt up, we do need one more enriched alloy as well as three osmium ingots. So I smelled up the three osmium ingots. That stuff was easy enough. I did die uh, via the sacrificial dagger whilst trying to make the ender pearl, which uh, is now finished. The diamond automatically turned into an emerald which then automatically turned into the ender pearl. So, uh, so that is now done. Uh, let's go ahead and make ourselves a quick uh, enriched alloy. We should be pretty good on iron now. So let's go ahead and throw some more of these in. We need like two more iron to make this actually work. There we go. Good stuff. Let's craft that up in here. Get ourselves that final iron gear. Uh, rhyme not intended. The enriched alloy, which is not what I made. I meant to put osmium in there. Did I put osmium in? No, I meant to put iron in there, not osmium. Okay, so we'll use our last piece of redstone here. Hopefully, we don't need any more. But now I think about it, we might need one for the translocator. So I think I might have to go... Yeah, I'm going to have to go out and get another bucket of lava. That's fine. Let's take you. And we should now be able to go and make ourselves an electric pump. Which, by the way, is going to make our lives... Again, I said it's an awful lot, actually. But it's going to make our lives so much easier. Because now, we can automatically start to pump. Uh, actually, we first of all, need to make the steel block. Which is you, 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 and you. With... Oh, we need one more iron gear. What the heck? Okay. Okay, so I made the extra iron gear. Now we can go ahead and hopefully make ourselves the electric pump. 
Nice. And basically what this is going to allow us to do is actually pump the life essence from this big ocean directly into tanks like these without having to go out and fill it up manually, which again, it's going to make it just so much quicker and easier to get a bunch of life essence into the blood altar and it just save us time, which is pretty cool. Uh, so back into the quest book, this is done. That gets us a green heart canister as well as another portable tank. Not quite sure we need so many portable tanks. Uh, we can go ahead and equip the green heart canister over here. Mm, permanent health increase. We're about to get some more health. I don't know if that helps us with the blood altar. It would be pretty cool if it did. But now what I'm going to have to do, guys, in order to finish up this quest line is go away, get myself a bucket of lava and a piece of sand so we can get ourselves some more redstone. So I'm going to go do that and I'll be back in a second. Okay, so not too long later, we now have the lava bucket and the sand. So we can go ahead and craft those up into to another block of redstone craft that into some normal redstone and i think that gives us pretty much about everything we need to go ahead and make ourselves the translocator we are going to need four cobblestone we're missing four cobblestone to make a piston getting that is going to be real easy and four cool stuff let's head on back over to the crafting table and use that uh, actually another piece of redstone i didn't think about but that gets the piston and once we've done that Boom! We got ourselves two translocators. That, I think, is going to be another quest complete, unless it's got a second part to it, which it doesn't. Cool stuff. We can go ahead and claim that diamond, and then we can use that diamond to craft some diamond nuggets, which completes the next quest. Cool! And I think the only one that we didn't claim before was gold, so we now have an extra version of every single one of our Aubrey bushes. Cool stuff. Uh, now, there is one quest that I completely forgot, because you'll see we are 97% of the way through this first quest line here, uh, and that is because there is one quest left that we haven't done, and that is this one at the bottom here. I thought we had done this, but it turns out we haven't. We made one piece of obsidian, and in fact, we have to make 10 pieces of obsidian in order to make this work thankfully uh, what i have done between episodes is made myself an unlimited water source over in the corner here so we're getting the buckets of water for the obsidian crafting recipe is not going to be as hard as it used to be because it used to be you have to put the bucket of lava into the uh, the altar and then wait for it to turn into a bucket of water and now thankfully we don't all we have to do is craft up i think nine more buckets of lava um because if we come in here we do have one piece of obsidian uh, i'm not going to craft nine buckets i'm going to just do them one at a time i'll like make a bucket of lava using the the life essence put it into the uh, the 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 chemistry set with the bucket of water wait till we get some piece of obsidian and repeat that process over and over and over again until we have 10 obsidian uh, and i'll be back in a second and here we go quite a bit of time later we are now on our 10th and final piece of obsidian so all we need to do is throw it into the alchemical chemistry set wait a few seconds and boom we have ourselves 10 obsidian which is the final quest that we need to complete within this quest line but there is another part to it ah it wouldn't be that easy would it they wouldn't let us get off that easy what do we need to do to make glowstone for glowstone it doesn't seem like there is an easy recipe that we can follow unfortunately does it say something in the quest book Oh, it wants us to go to the nether. Oh, 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 okay. So I'm assuming that the nether, if they're giving us uh, all of this obsidian and wanting us to get some glowstone, I'm going to assume that the nether is um, like a similar, it's not like a, a, a skyblock nether or anything like that. I'm going to assume it's a, a fairly normal looking nether. So let's give this a try real quick. We'll throw those down. Uh, we are going to need some flint. I'm hoping that we can craft a uh, gravel into flint. We cannot at all. Uh, okay, well, how are we going to get a flint and steel, then? <laughs> as it turns out, vanilla mechanics still work just as well, so we can just break some gravel over and over again until we get ourselves a flint and steel, at which point, boom, we can make ourselves another portal. Okay, I'm going to eat up real quick. Um, I said I didn't want to use my sword, and I still kind of don't, so I think I'm going to go ahead and make a cobblestone one, just in case we come across any horrible creatures. I have no idea what's going to be through here. But here we go. Let's see if we can get ourselves some glowstone. We need 32 to complete the quest line. So I'm determined to get this quest line finished by the end of today's episode. All right, here we go. So, yes, okay. Okay, mistake number one, torches. Apparently, not, so, not as abundant as you'd like. Uh, and also, apparently, they don't work uh, the same way... Wait, did I press L? Oh, there we go. Okay, that's why. Apparently, if you press L, you can accidentally turn off uh, the global lighting. But... Thankfully, there is a lovely source of uh, of glowstone just right over here. Look at this. Oh, beautiful. This is going to be easy. Easy. It doesn't look like there's any bad guys around here that I can so see. So, we pigmen are not going to attack me. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. All right. Let's grab this stuff. And there we go, we've now got over a stack of glowstone, so if we pop on back into our quest book, that should be the very end of it, and it is. Uh, let me drop this stick so I can claim that golden apple. 
boom we have completed the first quest line within this quest bug it is now 100 done uh, so let's put them back on through to the nether portal it's the, the first quest line's done but we are nowhere near finished with this mod pack because the rest of the quest lines are significantly harder to complete than the one we've done so far but we're gonna head back uh, we can go ahead and dump some of this stuff away into this chest because the next thing that I want to work on and hopefully get done in today's episode is I want to set up the mob dropper because right now we've got our, our portable tank here and that works just fine. Uh, I want to test something actually really quick. Can I use, uh, I want to see if I can move this. Can I put this right about here? And then use one of the mechanical pipes that we made earlier to pump into the blood altar. Does that work? Because if that does work, that's going to be pretty cool. Let's go ahead and switch this over like that. Does that still pump into it? It does. Okay, cool. So because of, why the reason I moved that is because what I want to do is have a big mob dropper above this that's going to spawn mobs in the top section in the darkness, push them towards the middle with water, have them drop down uh, over here onto the the blood altar, and then we're going to kill them with the dagger of sacrifice. So as we showed earlier at the beginning of the episode, the dagger of sacrifice is made with 3,000 LP in a tier two altar. So if we grab this guy and throw it into the altar like so, and we've got 5,000, so that should easily turn into a dagger of sacrifice quite nicely uh, all we need now is a bunch of materials to make a big dropper spawn and we want it to be about 24 ish blocks uh, above us so it's far enough away that the mobs will spawn but we also don't want it to be too far away i might make it like 22 maybe because i also want the mobs to be alive where they hit the floor here so that we can kill them with the dagger of sacrifice and therefore get the bonus life points for our blood altar there it is look at that stuff beautiful so what i'm gonna do now guys i'm gonna go away i'm gonna mine a couple of stacks of cobblestone probably build a big dropper spawner it's the same thing that you've seen time and time again uh, and I'll be back in a second. Okay, so finally, way, way too long later, it took me forever to mine, like, what I think is about eight stacks of cobblestone to, to build this thing. We finally have our mob spawners. So if we quickly run around and take out all of these torches, it is now pitch back in here, uh, and mobs should be able to spawn perfectly, although I cannot see where my trap door is. It is right about here. I'm fairly certain the water shouldn't flow through there, and it's not going to. So let's head on down, and now it is dark, so I might have to sleep before we actually start to see uh, some mobs spawn on down here but i'm hoping they will so we'll sleep and then hopefully you'll see i drowned here um i got stuck in my uh, in like the pillar when i was trying to to use water to get up and down but i'm hoping now we should see at least one mob hopefully drop down as uh, so let's have a look we got 4605 life points in the blood altar and once our first mob I have no idea, like, maybe about 20 times during the past, like, uh, whilst I've been building this thing, uh, that, like, random snippet of text has kept playing. I have no idea why. But uh, hopefully, 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 at least one mob will fall here, and I can start to show you how this works. All right, here we go. We've got a witch and a zombie. So now, I think it's a one-hit kill. The witch is automatically dead. The altar now is 5,000. Kill him again. Oh, well, kill this guy. 5,100. 5,600, so we get 500 per witch. I think it's a little less per zombie skeleton and stuff like that, but if we keep getting more witches, I'll be 100% happy with that. But with that, guys, I'm going to end this episode of Hypervolemia there. Thanks for watching. As always, if you did enjoy the video, be sure to like. It really does help out a lot. Leave a comment down below, and I will see you guys next time. Yeah.